Okay okay I know guys this fanfiction is a bit out of date by today's standards with the Dark Imperium and all that but come on for 30 years we never got past the end of the 13th Black Crusade in M41. So without further ado the shape of the nightmare to come by Lord Luke and welcome to the second age of strife. It is the 51st millennium and the war continues. There was no great conflagration or calamitous final battle. Across the vastness of the galaxy, the Imperium died. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. The galactic empire of humanity crumbled. Its enemies too many, too great and too terrible to imagine. The great conflict of Arctavius had no victory, a war without end. In the fiery chasm of strife, the locust and the green holocaust fused, as Beast looked upon barbarian and both saw the other as kin. The new entity spread with a speed undreamt of by Orc or Tyranid. War and hunger melded into a singular desire to ravage, rape and remake all in the image of the new devourer. The devourer's hybrid nightmares were regenerative and spore-born, combining into a grand horror which mudded the galaxy, leaving naught but fragments as it left. Metallic sentinels of unflinching dread rose up on some worlds, leaving them safe from the new devourer wipe, but instead made them slaves to the silver sentinels, and fodder for their glowing metal gods. The elder race who had held onto life for so long, slowly winked out of existence, one craft world at a time. Eventually, even the rumbling hearts of the avatars fell silent. For a time, in the dead craft worlds, something slithers through the infinity circuit to this day. Unfortunately, the great god of the dead, Inert, is trapped within this infinity circuit, howling its mournful song into the darkness, eternally hungry in its desire to wreak vengeance on she who thirsts. The Tau, naive in their hope of unity, expanded into a realm of corpses and ash. Every world they came across was dead. The hard and unpleasant task of terraforming each world turned the Tau to bitter, self-righteous beings. They were disgusted at the actions of their predecessors, and vowed to not understand their fellow races, but to purge them. Only the Tau could be trusted with worlds. They decided that all others must be cast out. Watching, their patron laughed his sardonic laugh as his puppets were twisted into terrors. The Golden Throne finally failed. No one knew for certain what happened to the Emperor. For once the throne fell, no vox or astropathic transmissions ever came from terror again as warp storms engulfed the planet. The shattered remains of humanity had neither the power nor the will to return. All that is known is that the Astronomicon died with the death of terror, sputtering to nothing over the course of 500 years. Eventually, the Imperium, its coherency lost by the splitting of its forces against the new devourer and the sudden surge in warp storms, was shattered like glass. Chaotic cults stampeded through humanity, like electrical surges in an ancient power grid. With the death of the Emperor, the Inquisition finally lost its facade of unity, and most died, killed by the more powerful within its once hallowed ranks. The greatest Inquisitor lords seized whole systems for themselves, becoming feudal kings and regents, uniting scattered mobs of their deadly fellows around them in order to wrestle power from local governors. The church also shattered, becoming nothing more than a series of minor sectarian cults. All save Aphelia. The Adeptus Sororitas withdrew from as many worlds as they could, and gathered around Aphelia and nearby systems. Aphelia became a vile charnel house for the Ecclesiarch, who had been driven insane by all he had seen. He gathered his canonesses, abbesses and witch hunters together and put billions to the torch. Any system within range of short warp jumps as navigators could no long make long jumps. Due to the warp storms of Ophelia were terrorized by the Imperial Church, who searched desperately for someone to blame for this nightmare. It was said that in those days, a hundred thousand petty Imperia were created from the carved up corpse of the Imperium of Man. Each claimed legitimacy and claiming to be led by a leader chosen by the Emperor as he finally died. Some even claimed to be the Emperor Reborn. Humanity, so scared in their huddled masses, believed this heresy without question, too afraid to imagine a universe without their father and protector. The noble space marines fared little better. Most chapters utterly disintegrated as their forces, who fought individual missions across the galaxy, found they could not return to their chapter masters. In the darkness and loneliness, many marines chose the only path they knew or. They became rogues and near bandits pillaging imperial worlds for the war effort as they would say in justification for their actions. It was said the White Scar and Raven Guard war bands were the worst, as they were so swift and ruthless in their pillaging. The Black Templars retained the most of their original fervor, and merely continued their crusades. 
they became full worshippers of the god emperor, and High Marshal Dorstress declared a new and greater crusade, to destroy every human that did not submit to them and the god emperor, and purging everything and everyone else. Their zealotry blinded them to their own heresies, as more and leaderless marines, desperate for orders and purpose, tagged alongside the Black Templar's crusade. Millions of ragtag former Imperial Guard and massive mobs of flagellating Imperial cultists quickly joined the Crusades march across the stars. Soon, their depleted numbers, drained from the wars with the new Devourer, had nearly reached 2000 as starts. Yet, no matter how large their crusade got, the Templars were naught but a band of raving fanatics. Ultramar was renamed Grand Sicarium. Under their new ruler, Cato Sicarius, his realm became a holy site for the other Ultramarine successors, their fractured remnants gathering around Ultramar like a swarm of flies. Sicarius declared himself High King, decreeing that those under his protection should worship him as the god he was. Sicarius became the ruler of his own little empire. The angelic marines and ordinary mortals under his decree became his worshippers. Upon Macrog itself, the fortress of Obsidian was crafted, the heads of Ajaman and Kalga were stuck upon great steel pikes. A grim demonstration of Sicarius' desire to rule all. Ultramar became a darker place in those centuries. Those forge worlds still intact after the collapse of the Imperium either fell to chaotic or dragon cult invasions. Some were ransacked by rival warbands, desperate for tech priest slaves to help them work their stolen technologies. These slaves became bartered like currency amongst the various larger petty imperia, as they became known now. Some forge worlds simply sealed themselves off from the galaxy entirely, their fabricators for once preferring ignorance over knowledge of what lay beyond. Chaos became a raging torrent in these dark millennia, rising to levels of corruption not seen since the age of strife. Worlds were dragged into the warp as whole planets were overrun by rogue seekers, madmen, and monstrous space marines. The Chaos Legions became virtually indistinguishable from rabid bands of former loyalists. Some groups slaughtered in the name of dark gods, others just slaughtered. A baton the despoiler sees massive swathes of space around the eye, being careful to not disturb the new devourer, as it blundered around him. Dodging like a skilled swimmer giving a swarm of predatory fish a wide berth, he avoided them. A baton and his 200th Black Crusade plunged into the Sol system. It is there that legend tells of the War of Two Spheres. Here, Abaddon faced the army of the Dragon Transcendent, a vast army of fallen Mechanicus and those same Silver Sentinels that already plagued thousands of worlds. The confrontation was epic in scale. Warp spawned magic and demonic machinery and weaponry battled arcane weapons of unimaginable power. The vast serried ranks of Necron and Pariah, which covered nearly every solid world in the Sol system like a silver carpet. In the end, Abaddon was forced to merely surround the Oort Cloud. The Dragon had ensured the solar system was his. His, save for a single orb of diamond hard stubbornness titan. It stood a stony fortress, its doors sealed from the Necrons by adamantium and heavy cannons. Its soul sealed from abaddon by the cold steel cage of faith encasing the hearts of the grey knights and custodian guard trapped upon the world. All other humans on the world had perished a thousand years previously, yet the ancient warriors stood firm. A shadow of the Imperium's past glory, in the turbulent energies of the warp, the chaos gods also suffered. For with the end of the Emperor, something else was stirred. Birthed upon the death of the Carrion Lord on Terra, the Starkild suckled upon the rage religious lunacy of the dying Imperium, consuming every soul remaining upon Terra in its birth pangs. This is what killed the Astronomicon. Ophelia became a focus for this dark zeal. At the dawn of the 50th millennium, the Starkild became the Starfather, and the Warp became a battleground. For a brief instance or perhaps an eternity, in the Warp, None can tell for sure the Starfather became dominant over the Chaos foes. Then, with the sickening inevitability of the great game of Chaos, the Starfather became one amongst the five, and God of Order amongst Gods of Chaos. Where they spread Chaos, he spread oppression. Where their demons were feral nightmares that rend souls, his demons were faceless automata, enslaving the souls of humans into servitude. The Starfather's demon world sprung up in the eye and across the galaxy in the closing millennia of this dark age. They were globes of featureless gold, with golden faceless demons and billions of mindless, empty humans. The inhabitants of these worlds shuffled across the surface for no particular reason until they simply died of starvation or fatigue. It is the 51st millennium and I cannot wake up from this nightmare. I cannot wake up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this brief primer of Warhammer 50k fanfiction I really enjoy it and there's ton of lore for it.
If you enjoyed please let me know down below and I will continue this series. Be sure to like and subscribe for more also be sure to check out the discord it's worth checking out. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this, please?